on this episode of When Vacations Attack. Rome is burning. Close the doors. They're trapped on a balcony, but there's no fire escape. Close your eyes. The adventures nobody can possibly plan for. But somebody caught on camera. When vacations attack. Summer in Rome. As the vacation of a lifetime. Awesome. You like? Becomes a fiery death trap. When a small hotel erupts in flames. Uh oh, there's a fire in there. It's starting to get hot. What are we going to do? Leaving Jordan and Laura, two helpless Canadian tourists, trapped on a fifth floor balcony. The guy said that they don't know how to get in the building. With no one to save them, and no way out. Next, they're choking on smoke, oh, and flames are not far behind. Oh my God! When vacations attack, the breathtaking glory of Rome, Colosseum, the Forum, St. Peter's Square. First-time visitor Jordan Filippelli from Ontario, Canada, gets the sights and sounds on his home video camera along with precious memories of his girlfriend, Laura. We just had a pizza with prosciutto, uh, basil, tomato, and provolone. It was really good. Jordan and Laura are on a holiday, and she's having the time of her life. Oh, okay, you see, we're waiting to come out of the train station. And look at over there. There's so much to see. But on her third day in Italy, her very life is at stake, along with everyone else in their small hotel. There's flames in there. With Jordan getting every painful minute of it on tape. You might say it began with a bad omen. News of wildfires surrounding the ancient city. There's a heat wave all through Europe right now. Wildfires in Italy. We actually saw the smoke from the fires. And at 7 a.m. the next morning, Jordan wakes to heavy smoke in their room. I was having some trouble breathing. And I looked around and I noticed that it was kind of dark in the room. I grabbed my glasses and got a clear picture of what I saw. A smoke-filled room. The very first thing that popped into my mind was fire. There was no doubt about it. An electrical fire on the second floor rages, <laughs> sending heavy black smoke throughout the hotel as another tourist across the street captures the flames on a cell phone camera. I looked at my girlfriend and I said, there's a fire, there's a fire. And I told her, I said, do not open the door because you can see billowing smoke coming from the crack underneath the door. But Laura hears screams of terror from a couple in the hallway and opens the door to help. And that's when just everything kind of blew up in our faces. Laura and the couple run out to the balcony. Behind them, Jordan falls to the floor, trying to crawl out under the heavy smoke. A big, billowing black cloud just enveloped the entire room. So dark, it was almost like somebody turned off the lights. I was trying to grasp any type of air that I could. The feeling is almost like trying to breathe sand. And I really thought that I was going to black out at one point. Jordan finally makes it outside and slams the balcony doors no, shut. Go, go, close it, close it. As their room continues filling with smoke, and now panic reigns on the balcony. I saw a lot of shock. What are we going to do? We saw a lot of fear, panic, chaos. There's a fire in there. It's starting to get hot. It was filling it up with so much density that you could see the smoke starting to twirl and it almost looked like a milkshake on the glass. And the first thing I did is I put my hand onto the glass and it felt very warm. Oh my God. They are trapped on the balcony 50 feet over the ground, along with dozens of terrified guests standing at their windows. 
with still no sign of any rescue team and no fire escape. And even when fire trucks arrive at the scene, there is little comfort. The guy said that they don't know how to get in the building. Jordan understands enough Italian to make his blood run cold. There was no real direct access for them to be able to combat the fire. The only way to uh, get down would be to either jump or wait to be rescued. Worst case scenario, get burnt. Jordan tries his best to comfort Laura. He's putting on a brave front for her sake. But then they hear sounds from the bedroom behind them. As firefighters fight their way to the fifth floor, they're here to try to lead everyone on this balcony to safety. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh, that. but they'll have to climb down through five burned out floors to do it, still in their pajamas and bare feet. Everything goes dark as Jordan's camera switches off. And at the worst possible moment, he completely loses sight of Laura. As soon as we got into the main hall, it was a disaster. It looked like the entire building was a, a burnt matchstick. It's a harrowing journey. Jordan's heart is racing as he looks for Laura while being pushed toward the ground floor lobby, already filling with the injured. I felt something very wet, and I looked down, and I noticed that I was stepping in blood, a pool of blood. And that's when I kind of looked and scanned the area. Jordan still can't find Laura. He heads outside, where smoke and chaos fill the street. He scans the crowd. She's nowhere in sight. Panic starts to creep in as people pour out of the hotel. Minutes tick by. Then, suddenly, there she is, exhausted but alive. We just look like we came out of a, uh, a bombing. Their companions on the balcony got away safe as well. Jordan and Laura made their scheduled flight to Sicily that same afternoon. It took weeks for them to scrub away the soot from their bodies. But they will never forget Rome, where all it took was a few fiery minutes to change their lives forever. Sometimes I do wake up at night and I feel like I can smell smoke. I will get up and be alarmed and find out Oh, I'm, I, I'm in my own house, everything's cool. 